Good morning, uh, Mr. Z again. I'm gonna make a quick video today about uh, making ice cream. So we we're making something that I call rock and roll ice cream today in class, and it uses a really cool uh, science principle. Well, I'll tell you how to make it first of all, and I don't know how well you can see it, so I'll go over it. You need a, a, a one quart Ziploc bag uh, or any other freezer bag that seals quite well at the top. And then inside of that, you're gonna put one cup of whole milk you could use half and half or uh, skim milk, it just doesn't quite work as well. But if you're concerned about it, I'm sure you could you know, substitute. So then you're also going to need two tablespoons of sugar. So uh, put that in there. And you're also going to need some vanilla, which I forgot to put on my list. You're going to put some vanilla in there as well. Uh, about one teaspoon is enough vanilla for this. So then what we're going to do is we're going to seal it and try to get all the air out. See, air is an insulator, so it's not going to allow heat to transfer very well. So I'm going to seal the bag almost all the way, and then I'm going to kind of squeeze the air out gently, making sure I don't squirt myself with milk. See if we can do a little bit better than that. And then once you get all, all that out, you're going to seal the top with a piece of duct tape. So I got it like that, I tried to get all the air out, and I'm gonna take a piece of duct tape, and I'm gonna seal it over the top. Okay, so I'm gonna put it like this. And I forgot my vanilla, so I'm not gonna seal it. But then you're just gonna fold this duct tape over, so it's kinda of half and half, and it'll prevent it from, from opening up once we put it inside of our next thing, which is one of these guys, just some type of a, a coffee can. These work really well because they seal fairly well. This one's been used a little bit, so it tends to leak. But what we're gonna do with the coffee can is we're gonna take some ice, put it about a third of the way up in the bottom. Okay, so we have our ice. Then we're gonna take rock salt, okay? We're gonna dump that rock salt on top of about half of the little cup like this that you might have in your medicine cabinet of rock salt. Then we're gonna put our bag that's duct taped in, and we're gonna do the same thing again, ice, rock salt, and then our cap. Once so we have our cap on there, well, this is why it's called rock, rock salt, clever, I know. And then roll, we're gonna roll it back and forth on the floor for about 10 minutes. So if you have a, an older brother or a friend or one of your parents with you, you can roll it back and forth. Now, a word of caution to you is that these, these sometimes leak, so you're gonna get salty water, because that rock salt and the ice, you might get a little salty water spilling out. Well, it's easy to clean up. But if you're worried about the mess, you might want to do it in, on the garage floor or maybe in your basement, somewhere that you can clean up and not be concerned about it. <clears throat> After about 10 minutes, you're going to pop the top open, okay? You're going to dump <clears throat> all the ice out, pull your bag out. Now, be really careful. If you hold on to the bag with your hand, we're here where the ingredients are. What's going to happen is you're going to transfer some heat from your hand to this and it'll remelt. Now, it takes about 10 minutes to freeze it up and it's... It's a pretty decent homemade ice cream. So then cut the top off with a pair of scissors and scoop it out with another cup like this, but don't use the same one you had the salt in. It's kind of gross. So <clears throat> once you get that cut off, scoop your ice cream out, squirt your uh, stuff on there, whatever it is. If you want to put chocolate or peanuts or something like that in the ice cream, that works great. So you've got your homemade ice cream. It, it's actually pretty good. So what's the science behind it? Well, the science behind it is that when we take something like rock salt and we add it to ice, what happens is everybody knows if you live anywhere where it's cold that, that salt melts ice. Well, it does it in kind of a weird way. Here, I'll show you. I've got here some ice water and right there on the temperature, I don't know how closely we can get that, uh, it is right about zero degrees, okay? just a little bit under, maybe two degrees under. So I'm gonna take some rock salt and I'm gonna add it, and I'm gonna stir it around for just a second now. We say that it melts the ice. Normally we would say that if something is melting, that it should get warmer. Well, uh, let's see if I can get that a little closer. Twist it around, and you see that 10 that's upside down? That's negative, so we're almost or negative seven degrees right now and dropping. So what happens is the temperature goes down and it melts the ice. Now that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But see what happens is it lowers the freezing point. 
So even though the ice might have been at, I don't know, zero degrees, so it stays frozen, it lowers that freezing point. But what happens is, in order to make the phase change from solid to liquid, we need heat. Well, that heat has to come from somewhere. And since there's all sorts of water and other ice around, the molecules that are turning from solid to liquid steal some heat energy, thermal energy, from the molecules around them. Well, if you were losing heat, your temperature would be going down. So even though it turns from solid to liquid, it can steal as much heat as possible until it gets to that new freezing point. So here we go, I let it sit just a little longer. I'm still right around minus 10. So if I drop that to negative 10 Celsius, there's 10 degrees across the board that can be absorbed into and convert, converted solid to liquid. So the ice melts and it gets colder. Now that science principle that's going on right here, we call freezing point depression. And freezing point depression is what's used to melt uh, the ice inside, but where does it get the heat from? Right here. So it takes the, the milk, it takes the sugar, it takes the vanilla. All of these ingredients are going to transfer their heat by a process called conduction, which is where it just transfers through direct contact, into the ice around it, allowing it to melt. So as it melts, it steals heat from this guy, and that gets colder. It's the same principle if you get all sweaty or if you get out of the pool, even though it's really warm out, a breeze blows by and you get cold. Well, that water that's on your surface of your skin is liquid. It turns to gas, and that phase change takes energy, steals it from your body, taking your body temperature down. So what's really neat is it's the phase change that requires heat that sort of powers this uh, ice cream from milk to ice cream. But the other part of it is it would never work without the salt because the salt lowers the freezing point. That's what allows the heat to come out of this and for this to get cold enough to freeze while the ice is melting. So really cool. Try it out. You can uh, make your own ice cream at home while doing a little bit of science. So this is Mr. Z. I, thought, uh, I hope you had fun. Check it out.